we're going to solve the following equation y double prime plus y prime minus 6y equals 2x. This is a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. It's non-homogeneous because the right hand side of this equation is the function of x. We call it g of x. The general solution of a non-homogeneous linear equation has the following form y equals yc plus yp where yc is the complementary function while well, it's also a general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation and that's what we're going to start with so in step one we're going to find yc complementary function and that means that we need to solve the following homogeneous equation y double prime plus y prime minus 6 y equals 0 right so 0 on the right hand side means that it's a homogeneous to solve this equation we're, we're going to obtain the characteristic equation it's going to be m squared plus m minus 6 equals 0 since it's the second order homogeneous differential equation we obtain quadratic characteristic equation. This equation we can quickly solve by factoring, so that's going to be m uh, plus 3, right? m plus 3 times m minus 2 equals 0. From here we have m equals negative 3 and m equals positive 2. And that means that the general solution to this homogeneous equation is y equals c1 times e to the power negative 3x, right, that's where I put negative 3, plus c2 e to the power 2x. That's where I got those numbers. And this general solution to the homogeneous equation is what we call, we also call, complementary function. So here I can put y, c, that is the complementary function, so we already obtained part of the general solution of our equation. So we got that part. So the second step would be to find yp, which is a particular solution of the equation. So step two is to find yp, particular solution. So for that, we need to know that the form of the particular solution is the same as of the function g of x. So here we can see it's a polynomial function. Well, specifically, it's just a linear function, right? To x. Well, that means that our particular solution is going to have that same form. So yp equals ax plus b. So that's how we write polynomial of degree one. So same form as g of x. Now, next we'll have to find those specific coefficients a and b, right? They, they're some kind of numbers, right? So since yp, this particular solution, is a solution to our differential equation, it means that it should satisfy it, right? So it means that now we just have to plug it into our equation. Well, for that, we have to find its first derivative and second derivative. So let's do that. Now, the first derivative is simply a, right? Derivative of a constant is zero, so it's just a. And the second derivative is zero. Derivative of zero, um, I'm sorry, derivative of the constant is zero. So th all that we're gonna plug into our differential equation. So it's uh, first y double prime, so zero plus y prime a, and then minus 6y, right? I'm looking at, at the equation, that's where I'm getting this from. Minus 6y. So minus 6 times y, well that is y, um, ax plus b. And then the right hand side of our equation is 2x. Now I'm going to simplify the left hand side. Um, it's a minus 6ax minus 6b equals 2x. And then I'm going to reorder the left-hand side. 
so that I have all terms written in the descending order of powers with the coefficients shown. Okay, so it's negative 6ax and then a and negative 6b are the constants, so I'm going to put them at the end. And now to find constants a and b, we have to keep in mind that we're looking at the identity. That should be an identity, right? And that means that the left-hand side should be exactly the same as the right-hand side. So what we'll do, we'll just set the coefficients equal. So if this is an identity, then coefficient of x on the right should be the same as the coefficient of x on the left. Well, that means that negative 6a should be the same as 2 or equal to. And then constant on the left-hand side should be equal to the constant on the right-hand side. But what is the constant on the right-hand side? It's not there, it's not visible. Well, it means it's zero, right? So it's plus zero. So that means that the, this constant a minus 6b should be equal to zero. So this idea is similar to what we do when we perform partial fraction decomposition, if you remember, um, that integration technique. So that's, that's a similar process. Okay, so let me write down what I got. So I got that negative 6a equals 2, and then a minus 6b equals 0. So I end up with some kind of system. It, it's going to be bigger or smaller depending on how many constants, um, undetermined constants you have. In this case, we got a pretty simple system. So from here, I can right away find what a is, right? If I divide by negative 6 on both sides, I'll find that a is negative 1 over 3. And then since a is negative 1 over 3, I can find b. So from here, negative 1 over 3 minus 6b equals 0. So that means that um, I, can, I can add 6b to both sides. Negative, so from here, it's negative 1 over 3 equal, equals 6b. And if I multiply by 1 over 6, on both sides, I'll find that b is negative 1 over 18, right? Okay, so we found a and b, and that means that now we can write down what the particular solution is, yp. So from here, the particular solution is it's ax plus b, but now a is negative one-third, so it's negative one-third x minus one over 18. So that's yp, pretty good solution. And now we have all the pieces. So the last step, step three, is to write down the general solution to our equation. One more time, the general solution to our equation has this form. It's a complementary function or the general solution to the homogeneous um, equation, so that, plus the particular solution. So we basically just have to add results from steps one and two. So general solution y equals c1 e to the power negative 3x plus c2 e to the power 2x minus, now I continue writing this part, minus 1 over 3x minus 1 over 18. So that is the general solution to the given non-homogeneous linear equation.